Hi, welcome to Don's Kit Tech. In this video, I am going to show you how you can create your own Node-RED custom dashboard that will display your sensor data like the DHT22 sensor. So, this is my custom Node-RED dashboard that displays the sensor readings coming from my DHT22 or DHT11 sensor. I can toggle the theme here so that it could be in dark or in light theme. And this is the Node-RED flow that I have created to display the dish user interface. I will explain more about this later. As you can see in here, I have my insights at the top that displays my temperature and humidity readings. And below it is my historical graph chart that displays the last 12 readings. At the right-hand side is my gauge chart, which displays my current readings and com compared it to a set of values like the temperature reading here, wherein it will exceed the value 30 degree. So that's why there is a red uh, line here, which means that the current temperature exceeds the gauge value, which I have set as 30 degrees. And this is my Raspberry Pi 4B setup and my DHT22 sensor. My Node-RED is also installed in my Raspberry Pi. As you can see, if I try to hold the DHT22 sensor, then I am expecting either the temperature or the humidity to change. So right now, the humidity is 63.9 and the temperature is 31.7. Let's try holding this sensor. And then let's see what will happen. As you can see from the humidity, the, it has changed for some reason. And it is shown also at my graph chart here, wherein the humidity has already trended upward. If I remove my hand, then I am assuming that the temperature or humidity should change. Again, as you can see, the humidity already went down also and is shown also in the graph chart here. Would you like to know how I did this project? Then let's start exploring. Hi! For me to continue creating useful content, please share, like, or comment on every video that I have created. Or better yet, subscribe to my page and click the notification button for you to receive the latest updates from me. But if you are generous enough, then you could support me by buying me a copy or through my patreon.com account. This would get me more motivated to create useful video content with a code and excellent pipe up. Thank you. So this is my node red flow for my custom dashboard that displays my DHT22, DHT11 sensor reading. I like how easy it is to set up your own running application using this tool by just wiring the different nodes. For a quick recap about Node-RED, I would like to think of a node as independent piece of code with, it, with each node having it, their own unique functionality. Before I start discussing this flow, make sure that you have installed the DHT22 node so that we can communicate with our DHT22 sensor by going into our Manage palette in here. And then search for the DHT. If it's not yet installed, then just go into the Install tab here and then search the, the DHT there and then click the Install. Since I have already installed the DHT sensor node, then there is no need for me to install the sensor for my DHT. Once you have installed the DHT sensor, then we can now start writing our node. The node for the RPI DHT22 can be seen in here in the Raspberry Pi. Just drag it there. And then after dragging it there, let's just let's add an inject node also. 
and a debug node to display the message. Now, we can configure each node independently, like, for example, this DHT22. What we can do in here is we can set the numbering so that it will follow the BCM. And it's, it, since it is connected to my GPIO port, so that's why I will connect it to my GPIO port. By the way, this is the wiring and schematic diagram of my of my current setup. So we just you'll just have to follow the wiring in here. So once we have these nodes in our program, then all we have to do is to wire the nodes. Each node on its own does nothing unless we make them communicate with each other. To make them communi communicate with each other, then we need to wire them together. This is what makes Node-RED a visual tool. The way each node communicates is through messages. For analogy, it's like the game pass the message played by kids. So for example, in here, I have the inject node here. Then it will pass the message into the RPI, HD22. And then the last node will just display the output value. So in our case in here, what we are trying, what I'm trying to show you is that once I click this button, then it will now begin reading the RPI DHT22, and then it will display the values that was read from my RPI DHT22. We need to deploy first this flow, so I'm going to deploy it. Now that it is deployed, then we can now begin clicking this button. As you can see, it's now displaying the payload, which is 31.70. If I configure this to display the whole object, like this one, and then I'll just that, delete the, the debug message again. We need to deploy again also. And then after deploying, I'll click the button here. As you can see, there is a message that was displayed by the debug node. Notice that there is a payload here and the humidity. So these two important information are what we're going to use later in our program. Now, for the interesting part, how do we read the DHT22 sensor reading and display it in a web page? Well, I have this flow for that. At the top, of the flow is the web page flow which creates my web application. First, I have to create this HTTP in node and I have configured it to have a URL dht 22 dashboard Next, I have created here this template node which creates my JavaScript code. I explicitly set the property to message.payload.script. We need to set this one as you will see later. Next, I have this template node where I created my CSS styling. So these are the style sheets that I have created to style my web page. For this case, I have explicitly set the property to message.payload.style. Then I have another template here, which I have named as HTML. So this is an HTML page where I will display my user interface. I am, so I'm just going to increase this one. I am using the platly.js here for the graphing or the creation of the chart. The interesting part in here is this, this part of the code, wherein you would see that I am creating the mustache parameter here wherein, wherein I am reading the message that I received earlier which is the payload that style and at the same time if you go to the bottom of the page there is a script section here also wherein I try to read the message that was sent also earlier by my earlier node so this is my payload that script and then for the we terminate the flow with an HTTP response node. So using just this node, then we will now have this user interface. So the next question that you might be asking is, 
how does the web page retrieve the sensor readings? Well, I have configured the sensor readings to request for sensors through JavaScript. As you can see in here, if I click one of the requests, then you would notice that it is giving back to me uh, a JSON object for the temperature and the humidity. When this request comes in, then it is the job of the next section of the flow in here. So if we click this HTTP in node, you would see that the URL is also sensor reading, which exactly matches the one that we use in our web application. And then the, it passes the message into the DHT22 node. So in this DHT22 node, this will retrieve the sensor readings. And then after reading the sensor readings, then it will pass the message into our next node, which is the function node. In the function node, we create a new payload object wherein we display the temperature and the value is coming in from the message that payload and the message that humidity, which exactly maps to the message that is coming from our DHT22 sensor. Then um, we then use the other node here called the change node that will set the following property. This will tell the browser that the response that it is receiving is of type application.json. Then we terminate our flows using the HTTP response node. You might be asking, did I code the HTML, CSS, and JavaScript manually in the Node-RED? Of course not. It is possible, but it would be hard. So. The development process that I did was to create a, a project in Visual Studio Code. And then I can run this project using the live server extension. So I'm just waiting for it to run. Once I am satisfied with the result, then what I did was I copied each of the codes in here. For example, for the HTML, I copied it and then using the node, node red, I just paste the, the code in here and then just replace the style sheet in here using the message payload. So the code that I am showing you here is available also in my GitHub repository. That is how easy you can develop your own Internet of Things application using just this Node-RED Node flows. As you can see, I did not set up any server or set up any thing that will create the web page. All I did was just create the following flows or nodes and then wire them together. And then after wiring, then it will create its own web application. So it's easy, right? So how cool this node red flows actually is. That's it. The companion write-up of this video contains much detailed explanation of the project. The write-up and the code can be found in the description of this video. I hope you learned something. Happy exploring!